move on to item number six, communications. Um, and we have Ruth Ann Haley here um, to discuss the library, um, along with Jay Sherma. Good evening. brief PowerPoint for you. Um, as I think probably most of you are aware, um, the Thomas Memorial Library's trustees have been charged by the town council with conducting an engagement process um, to make sure that the citizenry of the community are fully um, informed of the um, state of the current library project. Uh, let me try this again. There we go. Um, Okay, we've got 20 slides here. Hopefully it's not gonna take us anywhere near 20 minutes to get through them. Um, I'm gonna start briefly with the background of the project. Um, for those of you who may not be aware of the fact, um, the project actually began um, with the new comprehensive plan for the town in 2007. Uh, a survey was done of all municipal properties at that time and it was determined that of all the town's properties, the Thomas Memorial Library had been the last to be renovated or in any way substantially upgraded. The last upgrade was in 1985. Um, it was judged that uh, a study committee should probably be recommended to the town council for the purposes of reviewing both the facility and its programs. And in November of 2007, the town council did exactly that. They appointed an independent study committee uh, composed of members of the town council, some members of the board of trustees, some representatives of the Historical Preservation Society, and um, representing um, the foundation um, that supports the library. The committee was charged with um, conducting a national search to undertake the study. And, sorry, we've got a loose cable here. Undertake the study and uh, after issuing a public RFP, um, reviewed a total of 10 proposals, interviewed three of those consulting teams and finally settled on uh, recommending the, town, uh, the consulting team of Himmel and Wilson to the town council, along with their partners, Casaccio Architects from Pennsylvania and Ose Engineering from here in um, Greater Portland. Uh, they were charged with assessing the library facilities, including space mechanical deficits, and to determine the nature of a library facility to meet community needs for the next 30 years. Um, 
Input for the study came from the library staff, the Thomas Memorial Library Board of Trustees, the Town Council, the Foundation, Historical Preservation, and from the general public. Um, data gathering uh, was uh, accomplished through 10 separate publicly announced and open focus groups at which over 100 participants participated. A statistically valid telephone survey, survey of 300 randomly chosen um, households in the town of Cape Elizabeth. An internet survey conducted using SurveyMonkey for 683 representatives for a total of over 1,000 um, um, contacts. Um, a full architectural and engineering review was also conducted of the building. Not surprisingly for any of you who visited the facility recently, uh, over 100 deficiencies were identified in the current facility. Uh, we've clustered most of them in, in this presentation. Um, and first and foremost is the non-compliance with ADA requirements. Um, throughout the building, aisles, aisle widths are too narrow, doorways are undersized, uh, the uh, lift system is outdated and nearly inoperable. Um, parts are no longer available for it. Um, the HVAC systems for the building are also deemed to be insufficient, uh, outdated, undersized, uh, resulting in poor air quality throughout the building, but especially in the lower levels. Um, and because of the structural um, style of the building, the fact that it was built over a period of 130 years, uh, the building is difficult to retrofit um, because of the way um, it's framed and because of the ceiling heights and uh, other inherent issues. Structurally, there are some major problems with the building. Um, throughout the entire lower level, ceiling heights are deficient. Um, in fact, in many areas, they do not conform to code. Uh, the structural support for the building is inadequate, uh, most specifically on the children's side of the building, um, and, uh, but overall. Uh, and there is profound um, evidence of water damage throughout the lower foundations of the building uh, and incidences of mold and mildews. The electrical wiring and data networks are at and beyond capacity. Data work, or networks are virtually beyond capacity. We are long since uh, relying on wireless and other um, sub-units uh, to, to break out the uh, bandwidth. Um, we have an inefficient layout. The building contains over 30 rooms. Uh, located on five separate levels, which makes it a very difficult building to supervise um, and highly inefficient in terms of traffic flows. The circulation area, for any of you who have used the building in, re in recent times, is painfully inadequate for the traffic, um, but it is our only um, service entrance, and it is the only place that deliveries can be made because there are no loading docks, there are no um, entrances that are below grade. The study identified in the short term a number of things that really should be dealt with um, as soon as possible. Uh, the electrical mains in the system were found to be um, Deficient to the point where insurance companies would no longer cover them. Uh, those were immediately swapped out as soon as we found that one out. Um, but the foundation issues remain and they should be dealt with. We have remediated mold in two separate parts of the building, um, but we have not done a full survey of the lower levels especially. Um, we have not addressed ADA issues because, quite frankly, the hope is that we don't deal with something piecemeal, but in one um, major undertaking. Um, nor have we implemented RF technologies, which is radio frequency uh, in the item, which is a, a current inventory control mechanism that is being used across the United States to replace uh, barcode technology because it embeds information within it. 
Uh, it's a very expensive technology. The actual implementation of the system would probably cost between $150,000 and $200,000 ultimately. Uh, until we have a better idea of what we're actually going to do, it didn't seem practical to us to start implementing that technology um, because, quite frankly, we have too many unsecured ways of moving materials in and out of the building. Um, there are over 40 windows in the building, all of which open. There are three major doors, none of which are alarmed. Inventory control uh, and security are simply non-existent. In the longer term, the consulting team was asked to study three separate approaches to the situation. They were asked to look at reprogramming of existing space, staying within our footprint and just trying to remodel, as it were, to maximize the efficiency of the building. They were asked to examine the possibility of reusing some of the current structure, but maybe doing an addition unto it. And they were asked to examine a new facility. In the end, they decided that they could not recommend a remediation of the current structure. Uh, it was cost prohibited uh, anywhere between a million and two million dollars just to address um, the structural issues and whatever that I've told you about without any significant gain to the programming area of the building. And one of the things that they uh, found in a survey of the building is that we are inadequate in terms of space in the children's areas, young adult areas, computing areas, community meeting rooms, and staff areas for the building. Um, there is insufficient square footage for the historical society, which was part of the initial charge to us from the town council. Um, and the layout um, with the corridors that, and the connectors throughout the building uh, uses such a high percentage of the building's 15,000 gross square feet as to make um, the building um, difficult, shall we say. Um, the second option that they, they studied was the, no, the notion of reutilizing as much of the building as was structurally sound um, and simply adding additions to it. Um, so it's a, a kind of tear down and replace sort of scenario. What they found was to maintain the existing or the best of the existing structure was going to be an expensive retrofit for the reasons that I alluded to earlier. The structure of the building does not lend itself easily um, to modern systems. Um, and in doing that, we would perpetuate many of the inconveniences to the general public, especially those with accessibility concerns. The cost for the project uh, as estimated in 2009 was five to $7.5 million. Uh, I should say that that includes uh, furnishing, that includes um, landscaping, it includes uh, tear down, um, those sort of things, a new construction cost. The final option that they were asked to study was a new facility. Um, there were two fundamental questions that had to be examined in that scenario, and one of them was a new facility on the existing lot or a new facility on some other piece of real estate. Um, a library the size that's currently projected would require anywhere from 2 to 2.5 acres of land uh, to be fully um, implemented with the parking requirements that are generally required in a, in a in a town under our current zoning and um, habit, occupancy um, bylaws. In point of fact, the library with its two spare lots uh, is little less than two acres, so it's going to be a tight fit to do it there. But the cost of buying an additional two and a half acres in the center of Cape Elizabeth would probably add about $2 million to the cost of the project. So it was kind of a no-brainer. Uh, if this is going to go forward, it's a new uh, piece of real estate, it's going to go forward on the same lot. Um, the advantages of doing a new building are first and foremost that it, it is able to um, address all of the identified issues, all the deficiencies can be handled in one swell foop, as they say. Um, children's programming can be addressed, multi-purpose multi community rooms can be addressed, service areas, supervision uh, can be designed into the building. 
and the structural uh, elements that are necessary for a library can also be addressed. Um, I should say, you know, just by way of example, that one of the issues in rehabbing the current facility uh, is most clearly demonstrated in the community room. Uh, for those of you who have been in the community room recently, you will recognize that's the room below the children's library. Um, first of all, the ceiling heights do not meet code. Uh, a tall man can uh, damage his toupee on the sprinkler heads. It is that low a ceiling. Um, beyond that, um, the part of the library that is most structurally deficient is in fact the children's library. Uh, unlike normal joisting, uh, when the library's addition was built, what they did was put what are, what are called hangers down the main carrying beam and then notched all the joists to hang off of that structure, thereby reducing the structural integrity of a two by eight to a, essentially a two by four. To address the problems of that room, the room would have to either be jacked approximately 16 to 20 inches uh, so that steel could be introduced or the floor would have to go down and you'd still have the issue of having to introduce steel. Um, the cost for that alone in 2007 was somewhere between four and five hundred thousand um, dollars. So it's almost certain that whatever were to happen in the library, the children's library would have to go. Um, the drawbacks of a new facility on that lot are lot saturation. Um, it's an extremely, 23,000 square feet is an extremely large building on a very small piece of property. And the net result of that would be that inadequate parking would be part of the situation from the day uh, that we opened. In 2009, um, the study committee made their final recommendation to the council in October, and they recommended a 23,000 square foot building. The cost is 5.1 to 7.8 million dollars. You'll notice that that's almost exactly the same cost as a rehab uh, with addition. And the ultimate decision of the study committee was, if we're going to spend this money, we might as well make all the problems go away and not perpetuate them. Um, in 2010, or I should say at this point, when that report was received, it was received by the town council but deferred. The reason they deferred any action at that point is because four of the councillors were going to leave and a majority of the council would be coming in new in January of the following year. So they did do that. In January of 2010, a new council came in in that spring during the budgeting process, they did um, authorize funds for a further design development um, undertaken essentially to provide materials for a capital campaign uh, and they authorized funding for a fundraising capacity study. Um, the intent being to actually find out how much private money could be raised in the town of Cape Elizabeth for a project of this sort and thereby reduce the burden on taxpayers. In March of 2011, uh, a second contract was issue, issued to Casaccio Architects uh, by the Town Council. It authorized them to do a survey of local business styles, to conduct a series of public workshops, and to develop revised designs using um, the Pond Cove Annex if, if possible. Um, two sets of or two iterations of drawings and designs uh, were undertaken. Uh, the first was a, re oh, was a new build, and the second uh, was the uh, renovation with addition. Uh, the renovation with addition was ultimately chosen. It was chosen um, for a number of reasons. Those included the fact that, A, it preserved a historical structure that had deep sentimental value to many in the community. Uh, secondly, it reduced the footprint of the building. Um, by going two-story, uh, it reduced the lot saturation, enabled us to keep the building uh, essentially with its uh, frontage intact, which left us the green in front of the library intact, maintaining green space, um, and it didn't significantly reduce the amount of parking that would be available. 
The downside, of course, of that is what I alluded to earlier. There are still some issues in terms of accessibility. There will be two flights of stairs uh, that people have to deal with, but there'll be a central elevator. In 2011, beginning in September and finishing in early 2012, January, the uh, firm of DeMont Associates of Portland was hired to undertake a capacity study. Um, they developed the primary statement of need. They conducted interviews of about 90 interviews in total um, and issued a final report in which they projected that two plus million dollars could probably be raised in the community to offset the town's burden. I'm inclu including in this presentation the floor plans um, for the new structure. Uh, as you can see in purple, this is the upper level. Uh, the Pond Cove School has been maintained on the right and is the front of the building. Uh, the Children's uh, Services Department has been moved into that part of the building. The reason being that um, the cost of remediating the structure to bear the weight of the children's stacks is far less um, because children's stacks, quite frankly, are lower. And so the weight or the pounds per square foot don't need to carry quite as high. Additionally, um, it en enables us to run a contiguous um, pattern into the, young, the new young adult area. In total, we've increased the children's and young adult areas by about a third, um, perhaps even as much as 40% um, uh, if we are, do it really wisely. Um, we have introduced uh, the, another one of the downsides about going two stories is that we had to introduce an additional 1,700 square feet of service area into the building to accommodate the additional restrooms, the additional uh, elevators and stairways. Um, to compensate for that, we reduced this total square footage available for collections and staff uh, by about 10%. Um, and we uh, will go into this project with a collection size at minimum main standards. Um, but we feel that that's an acceptable loss uh, because we do believe that there will be some offset to print collections as uh, the world moves in an increasingly digital direction. Oops, oops, go back there, go back. Mm -hmm. Oops, oops. Okay. The lower level of the building, uh, the important things uh, that I would point out here is, first of all, uh, in the lower left, the meeting rooms suites. Um, it, it is actually one large meeting room subdivided by um, the type of doors that you see in many convention centers. Uh, and it will be one of four facilities in the town that would accommodate an audience of 150 people. Um, next to it is a um, computer and um, conference room. Uh, it's designed to be set up as a computer lab uh, for the general public. And it's also designed to be used for adjunct school services uh, like Evan Thayer's robotics program. Uh, a larger area for the historical society. If that area is in fact reduced in a future plan, it is our hope that it would become studio space, um, that um, public recording um, facilities would be made available, um, um, video editing facilities, uh, things that um, might serve the creative community in the, in the town. Finally, we've located a lot of um, storage, mechanical, and service functions below the old Pond Cove school building because quite frankly, we can't bring the floors to the same height uh, in the basement. So we can't have uh, anything that requires full duct work. Uh, an elevation of the proposed building. Uh, we have done everything in our power to simplify the roof line to keep it a vaguely New England um, design and the landscaping plan uh, as currently proposed. You see on the right that we have maintained the front green. It is hoped that we would be able to use that, uh, continue to use that for summer concert series. Um, the parking is as compact as we can possibly make it. And most importantly, we have done everything to try to open up the, the library to the public schools. 
Um, it is our profound hope that we can continue the relationship that uh, hopefully we have built over the last 30 years. Um, we firmly believe that libraries are an adjunct to educational services. Uh, we hope that we provide for the community early literacy training uh, and that we continue and support uh, our student body uh, in uh, after school activities and vacations uh, and uh, in curriculum support without being directly curriculum driven. And finally, we hope that we're there for our students as they become adults and start their own families. I would um, call to your attention that any of the original building documents or planning documents are available on our website. Um, and I would also like to stress the fact that these are preliminary documents only. Uh, and it is part of the process at this point, as, as the council has charged us, to make the public aware and to make the school board aware and all of your support groups, see if, um, any of your parenting organizations, that we will be conducting a series of workshops, public meetings and tours. We are soliciting public, um, public input in the process. And it's still very early in the process. If the building is voted, or if the project is voted to go forward, um, whether that is by direct popular vote or whether it's by a vote of the council, and that is still not absolutely determined, despite what the press would have you believe, um, then it would move into a building committee. And the final design could turn out to be something very, very different. Uh, the size of the building is still open to, to debate. Um, whether or not the historical society, for instance, remains in the building, whether we reduce uh, the friend's presence in the building, all of those things are still open. The most important thing for my visit here tonight and Ruth Ann's visit here tonight is we want to assure um, the schools that we strongly uh, want your comments and your uh, input in this process. Uh, as I said earlier, we firmly believe that the public library is there as an adjunct to education and to support our students and our teachers in their work. Um, and it's important to us that when you look at these plans, you say to yourself, you know, is this going to be adequate for supporting the curriculum in a non-school environment? Um, right now, when Evan came to us and he said, you know, I'd like to work with you in terms of providing services to, to my kids, you know, after school and, and in the evenings. We were happy to talk to him, you know. The truth of the matter is, we'll do it, and we'll do it to the best of our ability, but it's going to be, it's going to be a stress for us um, because, quite frankly, our space is so limited. Um, but we think that what he's doing is really valuable, and we hope you do too. Um, and, you know, we want to be able to provide tutoring space. The new, the new facility hopefully will, will incorporate it within the, in, in itself, tutoring space. It's important to us that the young adult space and the, and the children's space be reviewed because we currently have our thinking in terms of what kind of computer support they may need, but we don't necessarily know what it is that you're doing. Um, and so, in the, in the same spirit that I sit with Gary Lenoy on the tech committee when we do the five-year and 10-year plans um, for uh, state monies, uh, we want to continue that, that uh, working uh, arrangement. And thank you very much for your time. I would answer any questions. Uh, if you have any, I um, am greatly appreciative of your indulgence. I know I'm going long, um, but uh, please, uh, Feel free to call me in my office anytime you want to do a private tour, uh, or I can arrange a tour for all of you at one time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Any immediate questions or um, um, David? I, I just had a couple of questions because again, we're a school board. We're not. We don't have any direct oversight over the library or right. the function. But I am interested in your raising the issue about interrelationship of the library with the school system. And I don't know. I think she just disappeared. Um, I, I had a suggestion from Meredith and a couple of questions that I don't want you to answer tonight. I just want you to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's anything going on in the school system to work with 
the, the potential new library to see if there is some sort of interaction in terms of exchange of information, uh, exchange of technology, use of it through direct access or techno technological access or whatever. Um, I noticed there was a video room, robotics, um, um, tutoring space. There seems to me that there is some possible connections between what we're doing and what they're doing. Um, so I'd, I'd like somehow that we investigate that with them. And then I had just had some general questions, just looking at your, your I understand I, I, I'm fairly visual about these diagrams, unless I have an expert to help me, but I, I just like, I'm wondering if you people are taking into consideration, or I'll ask you to take into consideration, the, I, you're making it a lot taller, therefore I wonder whether or not it's, it's impact on the lighting and visual space uh, for the very close nearby school whether or not it, it's, inner, it, it's taking up or will have any impact on the, the common play area in between the two. So I guess what I'm saying is I, I think it would be very worthwhile for the library committee to work with the school board about what impact does this building, never mind the services it could provide, have on the schools, both positive and negative. Yep. Because I, I don't think any of us want to go down the road and have us have a problem, or you have a problem, which we could have addressed up front. Right. So that's what I would suggest. Right. I would just, um, to play back a little on your comment, David, Jay and I have met, we've had that conversation, we've talked about when it reaches a stage that he's ready so I don't to have, have to our library staff be part of the conversation or whoever else, you know, um, from the district makes sense to be part of the conversation, that we're very willing to do that. I'll help make people available. I know Jay has certainly expressed his interest in working collaboratively on that. Um, and again, I would say when it gets to the building committee stage and design pieces are incorporated, that will certainly, Greg, I know, will be part of those conversations and, and, and we'll make sure that he's looking out. I think that's very helpful to say for the public because as a member of the public, I, know, I saw nothing about this in the newspapers. I read all this the first time. To hear the stuff going on in the background, I think it's important for the public to hear that and it's actually important for somebody sitting up here to know that that's going on because I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, may, may I just go on record as saying, I think you have an incredibly good superintendent. Um, in the 16 years really? that I've... I, really? I do. I, in the 16 years that I've worked in this community, I, you know, I would have to say that my working relationship with Meredith is the best that it has ever been. I congratulate you. I think this is a very, very good choice that you've made. Thank you. Um, we like her. We like her a lot. <laughs> and we do on our side of the street, too. <laughs> Jay, no, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. I choose. <laughs> John. <laughs> because Michael deferred. Uh, Jay, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the library, and you can, you can check my fees. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not certain about that, but I, I do my best to support the library system, too. <laughs> He's going to ask for more money now. Um, Actually, we're looking at getting rid of fines. Um, um, but I, I'd like to invite you to expand a little bit more on the, on the philosophical thinking behind your library design planning. This is a, a time when digital media is having a huge impact on, on um, library-related industries. The book-selling industry has been transformed. The music industry has been devastated and transformed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and there must be people doing very um, uh, forward-looking thinking about libraries and library designs and their places in, in, our, in our communities mm -hmm. going forward. Can you talk a, a little bit about, about that and how that's impacted, um, that kind of thinking's impacted the committee's work? Yeah. I think the key to it is flexibility. Um, the truth of the matter is, is that none of us really know what is going to happen. Um, whether it's five years down the road, 10 years down the road, or 20 years down the road. Uh, we do know that the uh, digitalization of, of uh, information, um, not just the book industry, but across the, the board, uh, is widespread and um, the impact is profound. Um, it's currently estimated that about 21% of Americans have 
an e-reader or have used an e-reader in the last year, it's interesting that only 11% of Americans have actually bought an e-book. Um, so that, that's an interesting dichotomy discrepancy that no one's quite sure what it means, but the implication may simply be that Americans think the current price point is too high and they're not going to play the game at eight point, what is it, about $8.4 for the average e-book now. Um, it may also be that what we're seeing is the development of parallel technologies. Um, in the same way that um, the motion picture industry was terrified of what the impact would be of television and, you know, 50 plus years later, both industries have found their market niche. Uh, the same is true of radio to a certain extent. Uh, it is interesting to note that the publishing industry published more books last year than it published in its history. Um, so paper doesn't seem to be going away per se. It certainly is shifting. Um, the mass paperback is probably going to be one of the fatalities within the next five years. Trade pap paperbacks will be the only thing left. Um, it is also true that publishers are moving to concurrent publishing so that the digital book comes out at the same time uh, as the uh, paper copy. Uh, but at this juncture, it really does not look like paper is going away. In fact, the buying pattern seems to be that the same people who are buying e-books are buying paper in exactly the same proportion. So that if, if you go to that section of the market where 50% or you know, people are buying 50 books, e-books or more a year, those same people are buying 50 paper books or more a year. So what seems to be happening, as I said, is the development of parallel technologies. The other main issue is that there are over six standard e-book formats out there. And until that standard really shakes out, the public doesn't quite know which way to tip. We do know that tablet technology seems to be displacing e-readers. But we also seem to see a trend that says that when people move to tablets, they start reading in a different way and they stop buying as many e-books. So, you know, there are some, as I said, very distinct cross currents at work there. What I would point out to you that the 10 largest library projects currently under work in the United States today are worth over $684 million. Um, the University of Tennessee Chattanooga is building a brand new library facility and it is not unique. Um, what we see happening is that there still seems to be a need for the library. Um, if for nothing more than, it's, it's no longer a matter of libraries being repositories. It's libraries as cultural centers. And that's part of what the, the planning committee has been trying to take into account in their planning process. Um, the notion that looking at the baseline function of what a library has always been, and it, it really has always been about gathering and sharing. When you, when you really reduce all the functions that happen in public libraries, that at the bottom is what's, what it's all about. In gathering of information in whatever format it may occur, and then sharing that information for cost-effective and social reasons. Um, in these plans and in the planning process, what we're hoping to accomplish is building a building that is totally flexible so that if the stacks eventually go away in 30 years or 20 years or 10 years, that that space can be reutilized for purposes that ascend. Um, one of the concepts, or I should say two of the concepts that are fundamental to the way we are thinking about this building are the notion of tool cribbing and the notion of sandboxing, uh, which are two terms that, you know, kind of have flexibility to them and may not have been generally accepted by the, the full public at this point, but the concepts are simple. Sandboxing is the notion of demo space, the notion that a library would be a space wherein every e-reader that's currently on the market is available and the staff is acquainted with them and can demonstrate them. And as technologies emerge, that purpose continues. The notion of tool cribbing is the notion of libraries moving their collections into non-traditional materials. Um, 
An ex example might be um, the Topsom Public Library, for instance, has fishing equipment. And it does that because it backs right to the Androscoggin River, which for the first time in my life is clean, <laughs> enough to actually eat the fish out of it. Um, and so this non-traditional material is available. In a broader context, that is extended to the notion of providing, as I said, studio equipment, or providing um, more high cost uh, creative materials, uh, plotters, uh, laser cutters, that sort of thing for the general public, uh, for their creative purposes. And finally, the last part of that thing is the creation and storage of local productivity and information and creativity. Local concerts become part of the streaming collection that the library has. Does that answer your question, John? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Great. You're welcome. Michael, thank you. Uh, sure. Uh, you know, as part of work, and I know we, you uh, mentioned working with the school, but I also I know you're working with, uh, even though we don't, uh, also working with community services, because I know um, that also the library has been termed, you know, not only a library space, but a cultural center. So any feedback or working uh, with kind of community services, I think would help the you know the public mm -hmm. assess what is the role of, of the different buildings, and then from our part, um, just from feedback, and I know um, you and I discussed this when we presented to the town council a few years ago. But um, if you need from us, uh, a lot of community members may ask, well, why don't uh, why don't we consolidate the libraries? Why don't the schools consolidate the libraries? So I know, I imagine that's a topic. You and Meredith have discussed, but at some point it might be helpful proactively to say we've looked at all the different opportunities, and I know um, that's a question uh, I get a lot. Um, so as a proactive information, and I'm sure we, we've worked on that. But also, if you, there's some questions you get that impact the schools, if, you know, obviously let us know, and we can get those answers to you so the public can be uh, informed. But thank you for. Uh, for presenting tonight. Thank you, Michael. It was a great presentation. And Thank you, Mary. I feel a lot more informed at this point. I, it was all sort of nebulous for me until now, so I appreciate all of this, and I'll look forward to attending one of the public meetings. Are those going to be um, coming up soon? There's going to be a conversation at the end of Okay. Town Council will Yeah, that'll be the first. Um, we are currently looking at developing a, a number of neighborhood meetings, a number of meetings with particular stakeholder groups, as I said, groups like CEF, the parent associations, um, probably we'd talk, try to talk to at least the Rotary or some other representative of the local business community. Um, and as we develop that calendar, we will publish not only on our website, uh, it'll be on the town website, and we'll hopefully get it into the Cape Current right. or the Courier. The Courier. That can be difficult. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Good. Any more comments or questions?